Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, back to the Tawahado Bible Study podcast. We are still in the epistle of Jude, or the letter of Judah, or the scroll of Judah. If you recall, verse 11 of the scroll of Jude included shout-outs to Cain, aka Genesis 4, and to Korah, or Korah, which we found in Numbers 16. And now we have Balaam, whose most famous passage comes from the Lord rebuking him through the ass or through the donkey in Numbers 22. And so I re-examined Numbers chapters 22 to 24. And in fact, I encourage all of you to read that for homework. But when I kept digging into it, it seemed difficult to shorten it. And that's the issue with context is you just have to keep giving the, the bigger context. So for homework, I'll tell you to read Numbers 22 to 24. And in chapter 22, you see Balaam negotiating with the Moabites. In chapter 23 and 24, you see him blessing Israel rather than cursing them after receiving payment from the Moabites. And he did this as close as he thought he was following God's will. God is also, as I said, he's rebuking him through the ass. And hes it's kind of not the clearest picture. So I think Deuteronomy 23 clears it up further. It's also important to note, you know, 2 Peter mentions Balaam, and we've covered 2 Peter on this podcast before. Jude is what we're doing now, or Judah, and it also covers it. So what I understand from Jude is that Jude is criticizing the false teachers of that time in the first century and parabolizing uh, Cain from Genesis, Korah from Numbers, and Balaam also from Numbers. And what it says, Balaam's error is that he is for hire. He's a mercenary. He does things for the sake of money, for the sake of the spirit of money, which is mammon. To give a kind of general overview, in the Gospel of Matthew, we see the Lord's attitude to the money changers when he overthrows their table. We don't see him behaving that way with many others. In Acts, which we can call another section of the Bible, we see Ananias and Sapphira smote or smitten. I don't know what the right, the right word is. They're struck down by God alone for lying. And what are they lying about? They're lying about their property, about their money. From the Pauline corpus, we could look at something like Timothy, where we get that great English idiom that the love of money is not the root of all evil, but of many evils. So the love of money is the root of many evils. So here we are in the so-called non-Pauline corpus of Peter and of Jude, and Balaam is mentioned. And what is Balaam associated with? With the love of money. So go ahead and read Numbers chapter 22, 23, and 24. You'll see his blessings in 23 and 24, and you'll see his money negotiations in 22. And for today, what I'll do is just focus on this passage in Deuteronomy 23. Remember, Deuteronomy chapters 5 to the end include a whole host of explanations and expoundings, further details of the six hundred plus laws that make up the 10 laws, which are the 10 commandments, which our Lord simplified by saying, love God who is invisible by loving your close ones, your close ones, your strangers and your enemies who are visible. Love the invisible God by loving your visible neighbor. And that should be able to cover everything in Deuteronomy chapter 5 to the end. Anyway, in the context of these excruciating details, you have chapter 23 of Deuteronomy, which begins by telling you who is excluded from the assembly of the Lord. In verses 3 to 5, we get to hear about Balaam and the Moabites whom he negotiated with. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 to 5. Revised Standard Version. No Ammonite or Moabite 
shall enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation, none belonging to them shall enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor from Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. Nevertheless, the Lord your God would not hearken to Balaam, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loved you. So a key few points here, and we'll be done for today, and we'll get back into Jude proper, getting into his quote of Enoch, beginning in verse 14, and we'll finish out Jude next week, inshallah, to quote vice presidential candidate Joseph Biden. So first and most importantly, you see that in the period of time when the Israelites were in the desert or in the wilderness, they were not given sustenance by the Moabites. One of the greatest features of the biblical text as a theme we can see is hospitality. One of the greatest things you can do is be hospitable. One of the worst things you could do is to be inhospitable. So the Moabites and the Ammonites are inhospitable to Israel. They did not provide food and drink for sustenance while they're in the area of the desert or the wilderness where you have to rely on the hospitability of strangers and neighbors. Otherwise, you may perish and be victim to the elements. Uh, other than that, you just, you know, you trust in the Lord to provide to you through whoever you go through. In Ethiopia, there's this great tradition called the Abinet Timurt, where people who learn in the traditional schools usually quit school of the modern kind or quit farming or quit whatever it is that was going to be occupying the majority of their time to follow and pursue the melodies of the church, the scriptures of the church, the liturgies of the church full time. And what they do is they often beg by day and they survive off the sustenance that they believe the Lord is providing through the neighbors and strangers all around them. And because of the deep ingrained Christianity, particularly in northern Ethiopia, for centuries, we've had many, many traditional schools preserved simply through the charity and the goodwill of the people who understood the biblical principle of hospitality. Finally, what we see is that the word hired is used here. So the Moabites are giving money to Balaam to do a task. Now, whether he fulfilled it or not, the Lord turns curses into blessings. And the greater reason or purpose that we see given here for all of that, because there's a purpose behind everything, there's an end goal to he who was seated in the heavens, is that God loves them. So it's important to remember God loves us. It's important to remember not to fall for Balaam's error. It's important to not let people hire us to do things we know to be against God's will. Glory to God for all things.